Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you coming back. Today I am going to show you five more pieces of software that are useful and helpful. This is basically part two of the first one that I uh, uploaded recently. If you have not seen that one, that should be popping up right there in the corner for you. So take a look at that one. Doesn't matter which order, just watch them both because there's some great software. The first useful piece of software that I want to show you today is called OBS. That stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It's a free open source screen capture and streaming app. So you can capture your screen. Um, so if you want to record something, this is generally how I actually capture everything I do for my YouTube videos. Um, and you can also stream with this to YouTube, which is also what I use to stream to YouTube. Um, there are other ones out there that do a lot of the same things but OBS being open source it has become one of the most popular options I'll just show you guys a few of the quick things here this is your interface um, here are your sources I've set these up manually I have another video that shows you how to do that for your audio uh, so you don't have to go into the settings and mess with that if you have multiple monitors it's handy you just click on display capture here and you can choose which monitor you want to see um, right now we I'm looking at a third monitor where I have Firefox open if I go to my primary it does this because we are actually looking at the primary and it just goes on infinitely there um, and then I got another monitor too but you get the, the point um, and then you'll go into you can take a look at your settings here and you got your general settings, your stream settings where you can connect your YouTube channel. I believe it does Twitch as well. Different output stuff for audio, um, recording. In fact, if you go into recording, here you can tell it where to put your recordings after you capture the screen, after you do a screen recording. You can easily change that as well. And a bunch of encoder stuff. Your audio options, this is where you'll choose what speakers and microphone to use. Mine say disabled because I've done that out on the front of the interface there. Um, again, that you might want to check that video out too. It's, um, it's actually really good and it gets all your settings in one place. Um, video settings, your resolutions, you can even set up hotkeys and so on. So if you guys are not familiar with OBS and you want to do some uh, live streaming or screen capturing, uh, this one is a good option. Okay, guys, next I'm going to show you Proton VPN. Now, this is a free VPN. Um, if you don't know Proton, they also have Proton Mail, which is very good. It's uh, for email. Um, but this one, the free version, they do have a paid version, but I have found that the free version is really much all I need. With the free version, um, you can connect to servers in Japan, the Netherlands, and various servers across the United States. Um, if you take a look at the interface here, it's pretty easy actually. This will show you where uh, the free servers are located. Um, and once you pay, all these light up so you can potentially connect to any of those. Um, if you take a look here, it says we're not protected because we are not connected. It will show your IP address. Um, you will not see the little white bar. I have my IP address uh, blocked out because that's not something that you want to share with the world. Now you can either do a quick connect and it will go out to all these three and find out which server is best for you to connect to. Or say if you just want to connect manually by yourself, you can just go pick one of these. Now if you pull the drop down arrow, you'll see all that is available here. Now if they're red or orange, like red I believe is, uh, they've got a 95% load of that. Uh, orange shows they got a 70%, 76% load. And then once you click connect, it will go through a little process here. If it's going to let us, there it goes. And it's waiting for a usable network. And it usually connects pretty quick here. I don't, yep, there it goes. All right, it assigned you an IP address. And um, now you can see this IP. Um, and it is different than what my personal IP is. I know you guys couldn't see that, but it is different. So it puts you on a different IP and we are connected to 
this server here. I don't believe you can find out exactly where it is. Um, if so, I really haven't dug down. But I use the Proton VPN. It's just a great way to keep yourself safe online. Um, totally free of charge, but they do have a pay version if you want access to absolutely all of these servers here. So something to check out, guys. And next on the list, guys, is called Revo Uninstaller. And by the way, all the links for these downloads can be located down in the description below. Now, what Revo Uninstaller does is when you want to uninstall a program from Windows, you generally grow, go into programs and uh, what is it? Programs, applications, something like that. And you just uninstall it. The problem with that is, well, there's not really a problem with that other than the Windows uninstaller will simply just uninstall the program. It doesn't do a deep dive and grab everything in the registry in the file structure to get rid of. Um, so that is why we use Revo. It is free of charge. There is a paid version. I have never used the paid version, but the free version is always done fine for me. Um, so what you do is you go ahead and open it up um, and we're gonna uninstall something here. Let's see, I go down. Um, I used to use this everything. I no longer use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this. We're gonna uninstall it. And it's up to you if you wanna make a system re restore point before you uninstall. I always recommend that you do, um, but I'm not going to right now. And we're gonna continue that. Now it will tell you everything's gonna be uninstalled from this folder, etc., etc. It actually does use the Windows uninstaller initially. Um, so after that's done, you finish that, but as you'll see, Revo is still up here and it's gonna ask us what we wanna do. So there's three different scanning modes, safe, modern, and advanced. If you wanna get rid of absolutely everything, I always go with advanced and I scan it. Now, once the scan is done, you will see there are leftover registry items here. So you'll just hit select all and delete those and hit yes. And then once that is done, you are completely done uninstalling that program and it is no longer in uh, the registry or the file structure. So pretty neat way to uninstall things a little bit more cleanly. Now, next on the list is a program that I actually have shown on my channel before. It is called CPUZ. And what CPUZ does is it actually gathers and shows you information about your system. As you can see, we got the tabs here. You got your CPU, mainboard, memory, SPD, graphics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's go through these one by one here. First tab is CPU. It will tell you what CPU that you are running, um, the technology in the core, or I'm sorry, the core voltage on that, um, the core speed. It gives you everything that you need to know about your CPU, including the specifications, uh, the code name of the CPU manufacturer and everything. So that's uh, pretty neat to have if you ever wonder what CPU you're running and what the specifications of that CPU are. Let's move on to mainboard. This will show you exactly what motherboard that you have. The thing that I like about this is it gets very specific about your manufacturer and your model. Um, it will also tell you the chipset and stuff like that. But this is my favorite ver or, uh, part of this tab here is it gives you your current BIOS version. And so what you can do is if you don't know if you have the current version of your BIOS, you take a look at this, then you go out to the web, type in your model number of your mainboard here and see if there's a new BIOS update for that. So this is very helpful for that kind of stuff and just kind of knowing what you got here. Let's move on to the memory tab. The memory tab will show you what type of RAM you have and how much RAM you have, uh, the channels, the frequencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's pretty basic stuff here, um, but if you move into SPD, this tab up here, it will show you everything about the slots that you have. Memory, every memory slot. So I've got four memory slots in here. And so on slot one, I've got a stick of DDR4. It's 32 gigs. Uh, it's DDR4-3200. It's very specific. Um, tells you manufacturer modules, stuff like that, the frequencies. If you move on to slot two, um, I've got all the same RAM in each slot, so it's not going to be anything different, but it will even give you the part number. So like if you have a 
stick of RAM, if you retain this information, you had a stick of RAM die. I mean, you can just look it up by part number or, you know, go back into your order history and just reorder it. But uh, hopefully you don't have RAM die, but it's pretty cool that it goes by each slot because if you have different RAM in different slots, it can tell you the specifications of that. All right, let's move on to graphics. This will tell you what uh, GPU that you have installed or a system, what what sys GPU a system has installed. If you're working on a friend's system, he don't know, you don't know, it's easy to go here, take a look. Uh, you got your name, manufacturer, stuff like that. GFX, GFX core, clock horn, stuff like that. So very, very helpful. Now this other one here, Apparently you can do a benchmark in CPU-Z. I've never done it. I generally use like Heaven Benchmark and stuff like that. Um, but this will actually do a benchmark on your CPU. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and mess with that, mess with it. I've never done it, so I can't give you a lot of information on this. But yeah, great little program to get specifications of the hardware in your computer. Okay. Okay, guys, last and certainly not least is File Locator Pro. Again, it is a free download. Um, I believe they do have a paid version, but I have never seen where I would even need that. I'm not sure what the difference is, but uh, this program is great. What it can do, it can search any drive in your system, and that includes thumb drives, flash drives, whatever, external hard drives. Um, you just pull this drop down, tell it what you want to search, in this case, we're gonna search the E drive. I threw a file in there um, so we can see if we can find it. Now, the cool thing about this is you can, if you know the file name, you can put that in here. The great thing is about this too, is if you don't know the file name, but you know that there's a certain couple keywords in that file, you can actually put it in this containing text here and it will actually read the actual files and look for that text within the file. If you don't know the file name, but you know what's in it, this is a very, very helpful feature here. Um, you can also do wildcards, um, do the enhanced document search, um, Office PDF documents, and you can actually dwindle it down by date as well. So if you know for a fact that you created it last month, you can set your filters here to search only last month. Um, but we're going to go back to main here. I know my file name was taxes and it had 2023 in it. It's just a fake text file that I threw in there. I'm going to tell it look on the E drive and we're going to start here. And look at that. Right away, it picks it up. And so there's your file. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in my E drive uh, with the path of D drive backup, radio programming. Okay, that's where that was. So then you can go open your file or you can actually right click and you can open it from here um, or you can explore the path there and just open up that whole folder. But anyway, guys, that is it for the five more useful programs. I hope this really helped you out. Um, if you will kind of like this series, let me know and I'll keep doing more of these. I find them kind of fun to do. Um, and if it was helpful to you, click the like and consider subscribing. You'll get some future content out of it. Thanks, guys.